Hey Lightweights, today I'm going to be reacting to Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's or Philosopher's Stone, depending on where you are in the world. <laughs> uh, the version I'm watching is the Sorcerer's Stone because I'm in New York. So that's the version that I have. Uh, I did look for the extended or the director's cut version, but I couldn't find that. I don't know if that's actually a thing or if that was like a Mandela effect that doesn't actually exist and I made that up in my head. I could have sworn there was one, but I couldn't find it anywhere. So I'm going to be watching just the theatrical version, um, but I do want to make it very clear that I have seen the Harry Potter movies before, so this is not a first time watching for me. However, there is a little asterisk there. Um, this is my first time watching them since reading the books, so I actually just read the first book this week, and I thought it'd be really cool to go back and watch the movies now that I've actually read the source material that they were based on. Um, and it has been a very long time since I watched the movies, um, but that being said, I do love them. I am familiar with them, so this is not a first time viewing, and I just want to make sure that that is abundantly clear because I don't want there to be any sort of confusion. Everything else I've watched on the channel this far has been my first time watching, so this is very different for me, um, but I still thought it would be a lot of fun to be able to kind of compare and contrast my opinions on the movie and the book now that I have experienced both. But since it's been a while since I watched the movie, I thought it was high time I watched it again. Also for me, fall time, Halloween time is just perfect Harry Potter time. <laughs> also Christmas. Um, I don't know why, but the vibes are just exactly what I want around fall. So this is kind of perfect time, kick off October with a little bit of Harry Potter. Uh, I am wearing my Ravenclaw sweater. <laughs> um, because that's what I've always told my house, the house, myself, what house I would be in is Ravenclaw. And um, I was really excited. So I have been, actually been collecting these. These are the illustrated books and I still hadn't read them. I've been collecting them for years but never got around to reading them. Uh, and I actually got my hands on a copy of a non-illustrated book to read um, just because I wanted to keep this one pristine because it's absolutely beautiful. So I was like, you know what? It's time, it's time that I read these books. I've seen the movies. It's time to read the books. And I'm really glad that I did. Um, I did also take a couple notes from things when I was reading books that I recalled remembering different in the movie, so I kind of want to pay attention to those things. Um, but I'm going to do my best, like when I'm actually watching the movie, to just react. I don't want to be constantly interjecting and being like, oh, this was different. Oh, this is different. Oh, this is different. Because I know that there's going to be a lot of different stuff between the movies and the books. So I'll try to keep like my thoughts on that sort of thing at the end. And then my goal for this is to just say, do I like the movies as much now that I've watched, now that I've read the books? Um, and kind of compare and contrast that way. I'm not going to do like a one-to-one -one comparison. That's been done a million times. I'm just curious to see, I love these movies. Will I love them as much now that I read the book? Yeah. So I'm really excited for that. Also, um, this goes out to Maggie Smith. And that's kind of why I decided to read the books because she recently passed. Obviously, she was Professor McGonagall amongst a ton of other roles that she is very well known for. Um, I absolutely loved her as an actress. I thought she was phenomenal and it is very sad that she has passed. So this is kind of in tribute to her as well. And I know that a lot of the cast, unfortunately, has passed at this point, um, which is really sad. But at least we get to remember them and honor them through these movies. So I guess that's everything. That was kind of a long-winded intro. And I hope you still enjoy this reaction, even though it is not a first time watching. Uh, hopefully you can find enjoyment in a different way from this film. Also, um, on my gaming channel, I did recently reach 100,000 subscribers. So these balloons in the back are from that. I apologize. I didn't move them. <laughs> so they'll be back there probably for the next couple of movies, just because I'm really proud and really excited. So everybody who has found my gaming channel, thank you so much for that. If you haven't yet, feel free to go check it out because I have a lot of content over there as well. All right. Subscribe. Hit that bell button. And I guess here we go. <laughs> I just love the music. I'm gonna get emotional just from the music. What do they call this in the films? Because I know later on they have a name for it. In the book, it's called the Put Outer. And I could swear it was called something different in the movies. A Put Outer is just such a anticlimactic name. <laughs> I should have known that you would be here, Professor McGonagall. Here she is. Good evening, Professor Dumbledore. Are the rumors true? Help us. The good and the bad. And the boy? Hagrid is bringing him. <laughs> it's just so good. Little tight fell asleep just as we were flying over Bristol. There you go. 
This is like really depressing now. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this. <laughs> there, there, Hagrid. It's not really goodbye after all. Good luck, Harry Potter. I also never realized that the bike that Hagrid rides in in that scene is Sirius Black's bike. Hurry up. Bring my coffee boy. Yes, Uncle Vernon. Aren't they wonderful, darling? How many are there? 36. Counted them myself. 36! But last year, last year I had 36! The look of loathing. Make it move! Move! Sorry about him. He doesn't understand what it's like watching people press their ugly faces in on you. <laughs> Dad, come here! Do you believe what this snake yeah. is doing? Thanks. Any time. <laughs> it's so interesting the scenes that they decide to keep versus get rid of, or the things that they decide to change in movie adaptations. He's like, oh shit, I'm in trouble. <laughs> what happened? I swear, I don't know. Uh, One minute the glass was there and then it was gone. It was like magic. There's no such thing as magic. <laughs> like, that's so funny to me. <laughs> they cut out, like, the whole first chapter of the book and they changed a lot from this, the, the zoo scene. But the mail is, like, accurate. In the book, they're like, there's one postcard from Marge. Oh, Marge is ill. A bill from what looked like a doctor and the letter for Harry. <laughs> we'll be writing to you. So it's just so interesting what they choose to keep 100% faithful versus what they choose to change. I know nothing about making movies, so it'd be really interesting to like be a fly on the wall for those conversations. <laughs> Owls are so cool. <laughs> <laughs> I always love how deranged his eyes look there. He's like on his last, his last nerve. And it's gone. <laughs> Fine day, Sunday. Why is that, Dudley? Because there's no post on Sundays. Right you are, Harry. No post on Sunday. Ha! <laughs> 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 he sounded like a bird there. I never noticed that. He has such neat handwriting. I you wish, Harry. Sorry about that. <laughs> Dry up, Dursley, you great prune. I'm, I'm not Harry. I, I am. Well, of course you are. Got something for you. Thank you. It's not every day your young man turns 11 now, is it? Who are you? Rubius Hagrid, keeper of keys and grounds at Hogwarts. You're a wizard, Harry. <laughs> I'm a what? A wizard. Dear Mr. Potter, we are pleased to inform you that you have been accepted at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. We have a witch in the family. I was the only one to see her for what she was. A freak. And then, if you please, she went and got herself blown up. Blown up? You told me my parents died in a car crash. I will not pay to have some crackpot old fool teach him magic tricks. Never insult Albus Dumbledore in front of me. It's funny because since I, I saw the movie first, when I read Petunia's speech, which is almost identical line for line, I was hearing it in her voice and picturing her say it. So I definitely think that helps because I think if I read the books first and then watched the movie, I'd kind of be like, that wasn't right. She didn't look right. She didn't sound right. And they bring, if they desire, either an owl, a cat, or a toad. So why does Ron bring scabbers? I know that's like what he had. It was the family hand-me-down. Hand but that wasn't on the list. <laughs> 
He's not supposed to bring a rat. <laughs> Just helping young Harry here buy school supplies. It's Harry Potter. Awkward. Harry Potter. Can't tell you how pleased I am to meet you. Harry, this is Professor Quirrell. The scene blew my mind when I was a kid. I thought it was so freaking cool. <laughs> Look at it! The new Nimbus 2000! His little face. How am I to pay for all this? Gringotts, the wizard bank. <laughs> I recently played the Lego Harry Potter game, and it's amazing, like, how accurate it looked compared to the movie. <laughs> Mr. Harry Potter wishes to make a withdrawal. And does Mr. Harry Potter have his key? Ha! There's a the little devil. Professor Dumbledore gave me this. It's about you know what in fault, you know which. I quote this all the time. It's so dumb. Lamp, please. <laughs> Lamp, please. <laughs> Key, please. I don't know why. That's just what <laughs> I just randomly say that. Key, please. I think it's just his intonation. Didn't think your mom and dad would leave you with nothing, though, did you? Stand back. There's the grubby little package. Best not to mention this to anyone, Harry. <laughs> He's like, I don't know what I would mention. I don't know what's happening right now. <laughs> I wondered when I'd be seeing you, Mr. Potter. It seems only yesterday that your mother and father were in here buying their first ones. I love how he has a system of organization and it looks so chaotic to everybody else, but he just knows where what he wants is. Apparently not. <laughs> no, 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 definitely, definitely not. not. <laughs> That's another one I quote all the time, too. <laughs> It's funny the little lines that just stick in your head. Totally unimportant. But they make an impact. Curious. It so happens that the phoenix, whose tail feather resides in your wand, gave another feather. It is curious that you should be destined for this wand when its brother gave you that scar. And who owned that wand? We do not speak his name. The wand chooses the wizard, Mr. Potter. It's not always clear why. I think it is clear that we can expect great things from you. He who must not be named did great things. Terrible, but great. Harry, Harry, happy birthday. I loved how in the books they like explain so much more in depth what the wands are made of, like how they each have a core and different types of wood. First, and understand this, Harry, because it's very important. Not all wizards are good. A few years ago, there was one wizard that went as bad as you can go, and his name was... Maybe she wrote it down. No, I can't spell it. <laughs> Voldemort. Voldemort? Voldemort started to gather some followers, brought him over to the dark side. Your parents fought against him. Nobody, not one, except you. That hurts so much more now that I'm a parent. <laughs> That's why everybody knows your name. What are you looking at? <laughs> He's like, what, you never seen somebody who's tall? Sorry, Harry, I'm gonna have to leave you. This is platform nine and three quarters. There's no such thing. Is there? I'm just realizing now, watching this, that the timeline of this, he would be, like, absolutely exhausted. He's been up since midnight, shopping all day, and now he's getting on a train to go to school. <laughs> could, could you tell me how to get onto the platform? <laughs> Not to worry, dear. It's Ron's first time to Hogwarts as well. <laughs> I want to cry looking at Mrs. Weasley just knowing where her story goes. <laughs> Excuse me. Do you mind? Everywhere else is full. Not at all. I'm Ron, by the way. Ron Weasley. I'm Harry. Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> Anything off the trolley, dears? We'll take the lot. Whoa. <laughs> Harry already flashing his cash. 
These aren't real frogs, are they? It's just a spell. It's interesting because I don't think in the book they talked about the frogs actually being enchanted. I don't recall the frogs actually, like, jumping. This is Scabbers, by the way. Are you doing magic? Let's see then. <laughs> Let's see then. Oculus repair room. I'm trying not to be that person. I'm going to make notes. You're Harry Potter. I'm Hermione Granger. And you are? Ron Weasley. Pleasure. Pleasure. They're all such babies in this first one. I forgot how young they are. This would be the scariest first day of school ever. <laughs> I guess if you went to a boarding school, that's probably very similar, but... Now, in a few moments, you will pass through these doors and join your classmates. But before you can take your seats, you must be sorted into your houses. Harry Potter has come to Hogwarts. You don't want to go making friends with the wrong sort. I can help you there. I think I can tell the wrong sort for myself, thanks. Boom! Gotcha! We're ready for you now. Follow me. She's the queen of the stern face. She's just so perfect at it. It's a mix of like how she purses her lips, but also the, the daggers she can stare. It's just perfection. Right, will you wait along here, please? There was a kid over on the table on the far side that looked so bored. <laughs> Hermione Granger? Ah, right. Gryffindor! What happens if there's a house in that year there's just like not a lot of people for it? Like what if one year Hufflepuff only gets like two new kids? And Gryffindor gets like ten. <laughs> Diving up the classes would be really Hi. difficult. What is it? Where shall I Nothing. This is one of those movies where it's so cool watching it back now that you know what happens. That was one of those scenes where when you know that scene is so cool. Hmm, difficult. Not Slytherin. Not Slytherin, eh? Better be Gryffindor! Let the feast begin. <laughs> Just the smallest things are so magical. <laughs> You're nearly headless, Nick. Nearly headless? How can you be nearly headless? Like this. Gross. <laughs> can you imagine the look and I'm gonna go to space if we were late? <laughs> there will be no foolish wand waving or silly incantations in this class. Missed opportunity. I should have entered my classroom when I was a teacher, just like that. <laughs> I can teach you how to bewitch the mind and ensnare the senses. Mr. Potter, tell me, what would I get if I added powdered root of asphodel to an infusion of wormwood? You don't know? Well, let's try again. Where, Mr. Potter, would you look if I asked you to find me a beezle? I don't know, sir. Pity. Clearly, fame isn't everything, is it, Mr. Potter? I love his little clap back in the book. I wish they kept that. Just imagine the bird poop that would be everywhere, though, if this actually was your system. <laughs> I'm sure, like, there could be some magical barrier that would protect you from the poop, but there would just be poop everywhere. Hey, Ron. Somebody broke into Gringotts. The vault in question, number 713, had in fact been emptied earlier that very same day. That's the vault Hagrid and I went to. On my whistle. Three, two... <laughs> Mr. Longbottom. Mr. Longbottom! Everyone out of the way. Oh. Everyone's to keep their feet firmly on the ground while I take Mr. Longbottom to the hospital wing. <laughs> Give it here, Malfoy. I think I'll leave someone for Longbottom to find. I just love how he gets on his broom that first time. You don't even know how to fly. What an idiot. <laughs> what an idiot. Another one of the lines I like to quote. Have it your way then.
Follow me. <laughs> How does she convey, like, I'm still being stern and scary, but I also am very proud of you. Like, d just, sh oh, she's such a great actress. Would I have found you a seeker? When I was a kid, I had a crush on Wood. I thought he was the cutest thing when I first saw this movie. <laughs> What's happening? The staircase has changed, remember? Run. Let's hide through that door. This is a minor thing, but it's funny because in the book they describe it as this is the first year that the third floor is closed off. Like that section. And this makes it look like it's always forbidden because there's just cobwebs and dirt. It hasn't been used in like a hundred years. <laughs> We think this door's locked. It was locked. And for good reason. The goodest boy. Ah! It was standing on a trap door, which means it wasn't there by accident. If you two don't mind, I'm going to bed before either of you come up with another clever idea to get us killed. Or worse, expelled. <laughs> she needs to sort out her priorities. <laughs> so many quotable moments in this film. You better take this. <laughs> Not bad, Potter. Just a natural at all things Quidditch. The only thing I want you to worry about is this. The golden snitch. I wish they explained that better because I never fully understood the concept that it give you a certain amount of points, so most likely you win, but you could still lose because all it does is end the game gives you like 150 or something so if you were down far enough in theory you could still lose i know that's a minor thing but they could have done a lot more with that i think in the films stop 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 it's leviosa not leviosa it's leviosa she's a nightmare no wonder she hasn't got any friends the perfect scene for october where's hermione Fatty Patel said that she wouldn't come out of the girls' bathroom. She'd been in there all afternoon, crying. <laughs> Turn her all in the dungeon! I thought you ought to know. <laughs> the delivery. So good. It's funny, I didn't realize how many lines I quote from this movie. I don't, I don't think I quote anything from any of the other movies, but there are so many that I quote from this movie. He's like his wand didn't break there. It's my fault, Professor McGonagall. What? Miss Granger. <laughs> Snape's face, like, what the fuck? Five points will be taken from Gryffindor. Five points will be awarded to each of you. For sheer dumb luck. <laughs> She's like, I'm pissed at you, but I'm also proud. <laughs> Dude, so good. Their interactions, is, they're just so good. Between Snape and Coral, it's like, once you know where it goes, you can see all the little clues they gave you throughout. Freaking love it. Good luck today, Potter. Then again, now that you've proven yourself against a troll, a little game of Quidditch should be easy work for you. So much. <laughs> Everybody duck. I never get my own. Less open. I also love I'm sorry, I said I wasn't gonna do this, but sometimes I can help myself. In the book it was like in a long thin box, so they didn't know what it was, but it's just so obvious what it was <laughs> in the movie. It's a Nimbus 2000. In the book, McGonagall's letter is like, don't open it here. I don't want anybody to know. And the movie, they're just like, fuck it, let everybody know. <laughs> Rub it in. Scared, Harry? A little. That's all right. I felt the same way before my first game. What happened? I don't really remember. I took a bludger to the head two minutes in. <laughs> Woke up in hospital a week later. Great pep dog, great pep dog. <laughs> These movies are just like comfort food for my soul. 
such fond memories. Now I want a nice clean game. The coolest eyes. So cool. This is dangerous. A dangerous sport all around. Like even as a spectator, you're not safe. <laughs> Harry, you need to focus up here. You're supposed to be looking for the snitch. You're a little distracted. Oh, interesting. So they combined two Quidditch matches into one. I guess maybe for cost of production that makes sense because it was probably really expensive to do all the CGI. But... The Quidditch matches are so exciting that I feel like pacing wise, you could have easily had both. I say that like I know anything about making films. <laughs> in Fire! On fire! I'm, I'm a broken record and I know it. I don't even care, but it's just. clearly haven't watched this with paying attention to that because it's just blowing my mind every single time. You're like, oh shit, oh shit. <laughs> Looks like he's gonna be set. Hogwarts, Hogwarts, Huggy, Huggy, Hogwarts, teach me something, please. Oh, they do a different chant. Damn it. <laughs> What movie do they sing that one in? One of the later ones. Snake put a curse on Harry's brew. Who knows? Why is he trying to get past that three-headed dog on Halloween? Then I lent him to Dumbledore to guard the... Yes? Couldn't have said that. <laughs> what that dog is guarding is strictly between Professor Dumbledore and Nicholas Flamel. You can trust Hagrid with your life, but you cannot trust him with your secrets. That's for damn sure. And now it's a perfect Christmas movie. Queen to E5. <laughs> He's going to go and look in the library for information on Nicholas Flamel, not in the restricted section. I think we had a bad idea. <laughs> I think you have. Happy Christmas, Harry. Happy Christmas, Ron. I've got presents. So sweet. Use it well. What is it? Some kind of cloak. It looks like I just want to rub my hand on it. <laughs> That's an invisibility cloak! I'm invisible. Like it looks velvety. <laughs> that would've been so, so, so terrifying. I remember I jumped... I jumped, like, the biggest jump I've ever had from a movie. <laughs> the first time I saw this. And it was so embarrassing because I was in the movie theater. <laughs> You don't want me as your enemy, Quirrell. <laughs> we'll have another little chat soon. They did such a good job with the invisibility cloak. It looks so cool. Every time he puts it on and off. She looks so sad. <laughs> there, you see them, don't you? That's, That's me. Holy, I'm head boy. And I'm holding the Quidditch cup. And bloody hell. I'm Quidditch captain too. <laughs> I see that you, like so many before you, have discovered the delights of the mirror of Ariset. I trust by now you realize what it does. It shows us nothing more or less than the deepest and most desperate desires of our hearts. Men have wasted away in front of it. It does not do to dwell on dreams, Harry. Oh, such a good line. Such a good line. It's so funny because as a like as a kid, I didn't fully grasp that. And honestly, I watched this a couple years ago most recently, and I still didn't fully grasp that, but 
that scene is way more impactful and way deeper than I ever realized when I first watched this. I checked this out weeks ago, Forbidden Light Reading. This is light. <laughs> Nicholas Flamel is the only known maker of the Sorcerer's Stone. The what? It will transform any metal into pure gold and produces the elixir of life, which will make the drink from mortal. That's what Fluffy's guarding on the third floor. That's what's under the trap door. Hagrid! Oh, hello. We know about the Sorcerer's Stone. Oh. Oh. <laughs> we think Snape's trying to steal it. Snape is one of the teachers protecting the stone. He's not about to steal it. Oh, oh, oh. What exactly is that? That it's a. Uh... I know what that is. Slammy. <laughs> so cute though. <laughs> oh, who's that? Fifty points will be taken. Fifty? Each. All four of you will receive detention. I thought you said the four of us. No, you heard me correctly, Mr. Malfoy. I hate how they, like, swapped out Neville. <laughs> I know they want to build the bond of these three for the movies, especially because they have less time to do so, but as the films progress, it kind of makes the friendship with other people a little bit more jarring because you never see them really with other people in these earlier films. You're not still on about that bloody dragon, are you? Dumbledore sent them off to Romania to live in a colony. You're going into the forest after all. Got to have your wits about you. Listen, the kids do a good job, but the adult actors and actresses in these movies are just so talented. <laughs> so talented. See that? That's unicorn blood, that is. Ron, Hermione, you'll come with me. Okay. <laughs> okay, then I get Fang. Fine. Just so you know, he's a bloody coward. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Fang. I'd say you were scared. Scared, Potter. Potter. Harry Potter, you must leave. Not bothered by the first time seeing a centaur at all. Snape doesn't want the stone for himself. He wants the stone for Voldemort. As long as Dumbledore's around, you can't be touched. Hagrid, who gave you the dragon egg? I don't know. You wanted to know what sort of creatures I looked after? The trick with any beast is to know how to calm him. Take Fluffy, for example. Just play him a bit of music and he falls straight to sleep. We have to see Professor Dumbledore immediately. I'm afraid Professor Dumbledore is not here. You want to be careful. People will think you're up to something. <laughs> He's like the balls on this kid. <laughs> Giving me the stink eye. I think not, Potter. Neither should you. His PJs. Uh, I'll fight you. Neville, I'm really, really sorry about this. Petrificus totalis. The way she holsters her wand after. I'll go first. Ah, yuck. That was actually really gross. <laughs> Stop moving, both of you. This is Devil's Snare. You have to relax. If you don't, it'll only kill you faster. Oh, now I can relax. Lumis Helen. Mm, this scene is kind of disappointing now that I read the book. I've never seen birds like these. They're keys. That's the key! Where are we? Graveyard. This is no graveyard. It's a chessboard. Harry, you take the empty bishop square. Hermione, you'll be the queen's side castle. I'll be a knight. <laughs> I love how he says that. I'll be a knight. Well, white moves first, and then we play. <laughs> the drama, the suspense. I love it. Once I make my move, the queen will take me. Harry, it's you that has to go on. I know it. Not me, not Hermione, you. 
Another very quotable line. So good. This song is so good. Makes it so suspenseful. Oh. Oh, that actually hit him. Checkmate. So good. This song has me goosebumps. <laughs> Take care of Ron. Then go to the Owlery. Send a message to Dumbledore. You'll be okay, Harry. You're a great wizard. Not as good as you. <laughs> and Harry, just be careful. You? What does this mirror do? I see myself holding the stone. Come here, Potter! What do you see? <laughs> don't be suspicious, don't be suspicious. I'm shaking hands with Dumbledore. I've won the House Cup. He lies. Let me speak to him. Master, you are not strong enough. I never understood why he told Ron's vision from the mirror and not his own, because that would have been a much more believable lie. <laughs> I mean, I guess he was a kid and he was scared and nervous. That's probably the first thing that popped in his head, but... I love every time they have to be shocked. Their faces are just so cute. Join me and live. Never! <laughs> Bravery. Would you like to see your mother and father again? We can bring them back. Just give me the stone! You liar! Kill him! Professor Quirrell is a complete secret. So, naturally, the whole school knows. <laughs> I love that line, because as a teacher, I can say that is so accurate. Well, ex-teacher. The stone has been destroyed. Only a person who wanted to find the stone, but not use it, would be able to get it. That is one of my more brilliant ideas. <laughs> <laughs> Harry, do you know why Professor Quirrell couldn't bear to have you touch him? It was because of your mother. She sacrificed herself for you. And that kind of act leaves a mark. Love. Not gonna lie, that still always confused me. I never understood that. They explain it a little bit better in the books, but I'm still not 100% certain. <laughs> mm. A lot. Heal whack. Why does he sound like he liked it? Money? Never better. So cute! And now, as I understand it, the House Cup needs a warning. Recent events must be taken. <laughs> He's like, what the, what, what? To Miss Hermione Granger, 50 points. <laughs> to Mr. Ronald Weasley, 50 points. <laughs> To Mr. Harry Potter, 60 points. <laughs> She's so proud. It takes a great deal of bravery to stand up to your enemies, but a great deal more to stand up to your friends. I award 10 points to Neville Longbottom. <laughs> Gryffindor wins the House Cup. The first time in seven years. <laughs> I do feel a bit bad for Slytherin because Dumbledore definitely pays, plays favorites a little bit, all right? <laughs> it 
This is for you. Thanks, Hagrid. <laughs> if that dolt of a cousin of yours gives you any grief, you could always um, threaten him with a nice pair of ears to go with that tail of his. We're not allowed to do magic away from Hogwarts. You know that. But your cousin don't, do he? <laughs> Feels strange to be going home. I'm not going home. Not really. It had been way too long since I last watched that. I still loved that just as much. I still loved it. I was worried. I was worried because there are some books like um, uh, The Wheel of Time, for example. I read The Wheel of Time first, and then when I watched the show, I didn't love the show as much because I had read the books first. Now, in that situation, it had been so long since I read the books to the show. It wasn't too bad. Um, but I know a lot of times if you are someone who has enjoyed the books before you enjoy the TV or the movie. It's really hard for you not to be like, oh, that character doesn't look like right, or oh, they changed that and get really upset about it, or be upset about certain things that were cut out. In this case, since I had seen the movie so many times, since the movie has such a special place in my heart, that didn't really happen to me. There were a couple of things where I was like, ooh, that was a really big missed opportunity, or now that I read the first book, I would have liked to see some things different from the movie, but that didn't detract at all. So I'm really, really glad that I did it. <laughs> I did it the way that I, um, I did. I think the biggest thing that really stood out to me was how different the characters of Hermione and Ron were. And I don't hate the way they wrote the characters for this movie, but I definitely prefer it the way of the books, I think, simply because... In the movie, Ron is kind of like the lovable idiot, <laughs> and he is kind of like, besides being honorable and being dependable, he's kind of just a moron. And it's it's a little it's a little frustrating now that I've read the books because he's the only one of that trio that was born and raised in the Wizarding World. So when it comes to magic, he should not be the moron of the group. And moron might be too harsh of a word. I guess, like, buffoon. I don't even know. I don't even know. Um, what I did write down specifically where it really, really stood out to me, the devil snare scene. So in the movie, obviously, he's the one who's panicking and he's the one who, like, has to be rescued. And in the book, Hermione is very, very clever, very book smart, but she also um, locks up when it comes time to act. So she has all the book smarts and on paper... She's by far the most intelligent, but when it actually comes to acting in the moment, she freezes. Every single time in the book that there's a moment where she needs to act, she's frozen. Um, yes, she recognizes Devil's Snare, but she can't think of how to get them out of the situation. So she immediately recognizes Devil's Snare. She immediately is able to say, like, it doesn't like fire, because in the book it's fire versus sunlight. And then... Um, She's like, oh, but we don't have wood. She's like, I can't make the fire. We don't have wood. And Ron's like, are you not a witch? Like, use your wand. <laughs> you don't need wood. And then she's like, oh, yeah. And she she rescues them from the devil's snare. I, I like that better because that feels more more realistic. I get, Can you say that in this type of a world? But you know what I mean. It feels more realistic because she is not of the wizarding world. Her natural inclination would not to be wizarding things. Her first instinct would still be from the muggle world. So I think for my my brain, that that makes more sense from the book. Again, in the troll scene with the bathroom, Ron uses Wingardium Leviosa without Hermione's help. Hermione's like frozen against the back wall or in the corner or wherever, frozen in fear. She's not helping at all. Harry does jump on the troll and then Ron, without prompting, uses Wingardium Leviosa. So I feel like in the movie, they kind of took away those big moments for him. Uh, and that's a little disappointing because it was incredibly well acted. Don't get me wrong. He did a great job with his character. I just don't like the direction they decided to go with his character. So that, I will say, was one of the the biggest things that disappointed me. Uh, and then kind of going off of that, I was shocked with how small of a role Hermione actually had in the book until like surprisingly far in. Because in the movie, they act like they're not friends, but Hermione's always with them and she's always conversing with them. Like in the scene where Harry's reading the newspaper and was like, oh, Gringotts, and he's telling Ron, Hermione's right there participating in that conversation. And that's before the troll scene. 
Whereas in the book, they pretty much detest each other. And like the boys are kind of horrible to her, if I'm being completely honest, until the troll scene. After that, they have this bonding experience through this trauma and fear. And now they're friends. You don't really get that in the movie. I really liked that progression in the story because in the movie, now that I'm watching it again, and I didn't pick up on this when I was watching it before, Ron badmouthed her a lot, but then all of a sudden they were friends like so fast. And it kind of like was jarring. I'm like, do you like her right now or do you not like her right now? There wasn't necessarily a progression or a growth of their friendship. It was just like, I'm your friend, but I'm also gonna badmouth you. Dumbledore felt like a lot more quirky in the books. He was much more like, the mad scientist or the mad professor. <laughs> like, obviously he's older, but he was just, he was funky, he was quirky. And for some reason that made it more magical <laughs> because typically when you see this old Gandalf looking dude with a long beard and long gray hair and the funky robes, you'd expect him to be like the, the Dumbledore in this movie. But when he's like being silly and saying, like he started off his first speech by, he's like, let me say a few words. And then he says random gibber gibberish words. And he's like, okay, now that that's done, I have a few reminders for you and let's sing this house song in whatever way you want. And you just don't get that in the movies. And I feel like that just, that just makes the book so much more magical and so much more fun because it's not what you would expect from his character description. Um, I did like the pacing in the movie though. I like that we got to see more of the classes. I was kind of disappointed in the book that we they talked about, oh, we have to go when we were in herbology or, oh, we have to go to potions or whatever. But you don't really, there's like a couple pages when they're in charms and a couple pages when they're in potions, but you don't see them in class a lot. I feel like you got more of that in the movies and maybe it's the ex-teacher in me, but I just eat that up. I, I could have a whole movie of them just in classes. I love that. I love that. I know they only did one Quidditch game, but they did a great job making it super exciting. I loved how they interpreted that. One thing that I also wish we got to experience more in the movie was when Ron looks at himself in the mirror. He's like, oh, I'm head boy. I'm holding the Quidditch cup. And he's like got all of these accolades. It doesn't really hit home how important that actually is to Ron. You're just like, okay. He like, he wants to like, he wants to be head boy. He wants to win the Quidditch cup. Or at least that's how I took it when I watched it. But after reading the book, I don't know if it's Dumbledore, but someone kind of explains to Harry why that was such a big deal to him why it was such a big deal to Ron. And it's because he's constantly overlooked. He's one of six kids. He's the last boy. His older brothers are like well known in their fields, like his two oldest ones. Fred and George are just like, they're goofballs, but they're really lovable. And and then behind Ron, there's Ginny. So it's kind of like, he just gets overlooked um, and he just wants to be seen. And you do see that in the movie. Like if you're paying attention for that and you know to look for that, they did a good job of having those little hints in there that Ron just wants to be seen. He wants to be acknowledged. Uh, but they did it because they have more pages to do it and more opportunity to do it. They were able to explore that a little bit more in the books. And I really loved that. That made looking back on the Mirror of Eris Ed so much more powerful. I'm glad that I read the books and I was able to see those things now. And I guess the last, my last little criticism that I would say now that I've read the books and I said this in the movie was how little Neville was actually in it. I feel like in the book, Neville had a much more important role. Um, he was always like the third of the trio of boys before Hermione became the friend. Like when they're in detention, it wasn't Ron, it was Neville. They still made it obvious that like Neville was kind of annoying to them, but they also were friendly with him and they also like kind of were taking him under their wing like ron ron told neville you have to stand up for yourself you have to fight for yourself and then at the end neville's fighting for himself in his house and i'll fight you like don't leave don't sneak out i'll fight you so that kind of came out of left field with the movie and again i totally understand why um there's just not enough time to have a one-to-one -one translation of a book to a movie um but knowing where the movies go, his story arc is probably going to make much more sense in the books than it does in the movies. Because all of a sudden, Neville's like this badass in the later films. And it never quite made, like, how did you get there? Um, now reading the books, I'm like, oh, that's how he got there. Like, he was always growing into this character, even from book one. But all of those little criticisms and critiques aside, this is a I think a great movie adaptation of a book. I really genuinely feel like they did a great job. Most of the characters, I won't say all, but most of the characters are impeccably spot on for appearances, which is just 
astonishing that they could do that, that they were able to do that. Um, and I feel like they did a great job of taking all the contents from the book and paring it down to a good length. Obviously, they cut some things that I would have loved to be in there still. But overall, they kept the really important stuff and they were able to really translate the book to the movie very well, I think. I'd be curious to see how the other ones hold up because the books do get much longer. And I think it's only the last book that's split into two movies, if I recall correctly. Um, so it's probably going to be more, much more difficult to do that, but I'm definitely curious how they do with their adaptations as they go. But overall, I still absolutely adore this. I, it was just so good. And the music is just, I obviously I knew the music was phenomenal, but it's one of those things where it doesn't matter how many times you see this. I will always get goosebumps. I will always get slightly emotional and not cry, but you know, a little misty eyed. Um, it will always just be magical. They really were able to make this magical. And it just, oh, this movie is almost my soul food. It's my comfort food. And it has been way too long. I haven't watched this since my child's been born. So she's going to be three in November. So it's been, it's been almost three years since I watched it. It's way overdue. Um, but I was just reminded why I loved it so much. And I think I also just have really fond memories of this as I think most people of my generation and, you know, slightly older than me do. But I, I remember my dad let me go to the midnight showing. We went, he owned a martial arts school at that time. So he took me and a bunch of the students from the martial arts school. We all went to the midnight showing. We had like three rows of friends that we went with. And the next day he let me skip school because we didn't get home until like three in the morning, four in the morning. Um, and it was just such a magical I'm I'm getting emotional just thinking about it it was one of those things that will just live with me forever and it was very special to me so um these movies definitely have a special place in my heart and I'm definitely glad I finally have read the books um I I kind of want to read the illustrated copy now although I'm just afraid to because I don't I don't want it to get ruined. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. Um, if you guys haven't seen these before, they sell them everywhere, but I always find mine at Target. So if you're interested, you could probably find them at like Barnes and Noble or Target or probably a million in one places. But um, these are definitely gorgeous and worth it. And I'm, I think I'm going to have to read this next. I, I have the pictureless version. I'll watch the movie and then I'll read this and I'll see how they all compare. <laughs> And this is different for me since I have seen this movie. So I don't, I don't really know how to go about this. <laughs> it's my first time reacting to a movie that I've already seen. Um, so I don't know. I hope that I did an okay job with it. I hope it was still enjoyable for you. I hope that I was able to express myself clearly in this outro, even though it was very lengthy. Um, I just appreciate you guys watching and... Yeah, I don't really know what I'm going to be reacting to next, but if you liked this reaction and you'd like to see the full thing, it will be on my Patreon. I'll link that in a pinned comment below. Um, and I think that's everything. I think I'm going to stop talking now because I'm about to lose my voice. I've been talking so much. <laughs> but I appreciate you all. I hope you enjoyed the reaction. If you did, please make sure you subscribe. Definitely hit that bell button so you know when I post future reaction videos. And I hope you have an amazing day.